Hi, welcome to Alpine Bravo. My name's Brendan. This is my channel for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today we're carrying on with our series of tutorials on the Kodiak 100 by Simwork Studio. And today we'll be looking at uh, cabin pre flight and before engine start checklists. Uh, before we get into video, um, thank you for everyone so far who has subscribed to the channel and those of you who have liked and commented on the videos, it's really appreciated. And a special big thanks to Simwork Studio who saw what I was doing and reached out to me and uh, made an early access version of the latest release of the Kodiak available for me to make these tutorials. It's really appreciated. Um, and uh, you know it's fantastic uh, to get that uh, kind of contact with the developer so uh, without any further ado we will jump into the cockpit so here we are on the ground in orcas island and what we will do is we'll just start working our way through the checklists. Uh, SWS provide an excellent set of comprehensive checklists for the Kodiak based on the real aircraft checklists uh, from the pilot operating handbook. Um, we'll start with the pre-flight inspection cabin, then move on to the before starting engine. And so we'll just open up. Now, a little word. I normally control the aircraft uh, using peripherals, but for the purpose of this video, I'll be trying to use my mouse in lock mode, uh, just so all the controls get highlighted so it's a bit easier for you to see. Um, I do normally use external peripherals, so sometimes I'm a little bit uncertain how to uh, operate some of the, uh, some of the buttons. Um, but uh, yeah. The other thing I'll just mention, uh, if you are getting familiar with the aircraft, uh, using the checklist is a really good way to uh, learn where everything is. You can click on this little eye icon here and it'll point towards the relevant area of the cockpit. Um, and you can also, within the assistant settings, uh, have it set up so that the co-pilot will uh, confirm whether you have got, um, you know, whether you've ticked off the appropriate item or not. I uh, won't be using that today. Um, so we'll just start working our way through. This is an abbreviated version of the real aircraft checklist. It's a lot more comprehensive, but there's uh, obviously quite a lot of things that uh, aren't actually present in the simulator and SWS have omitted those. But we'll start off with control locks. They're not actually modeled yet. Uh, so they're always off. Um, parking brake. We'll just pop the yoke away and that's the parking brake there and that is set. Uh, electrical equipment, so we just quickly scan the left and right panels here and they're all off. Circuit breakers down here in the pedestal and they're all pushed. Fuel selectors, uh, this is where we move to the overhead and we have left and right here and we want uh, both of those on like so and then our fuel firewall fuel shutoff valve and push that to open it fire extinguishers left and right there's a third in the passenger compartment and then we will turn the master switch on i'll just kind of minimize that menu for now and we'll just have a look at what happens when we put the master battery on get the garmin screens come up and the first thing we see is the PFD in revisionary mode. So we have the engine instruments in here on the left. And we've got all these red boxes, uh, which are while the air data computer uh, gets uh, spun up. And then we're also seeing the AHARS align. Uh, that's the attitude heading reference system. And we've also got TOS test. Uh, now, you should get an oral warning, uh, oral indication which says TOS system test okay, but for some reason I haven't been getting that. Um, now, if we click enter here, that will take the primary flight display out of revisionary mode and we'll see our engine instruments here. So, we'll also then return to our checklist. Uh, so that was master switch on, master avionics, pop that on. I 
we'll listen for the cooling fan, which is heard. We've already initialized the MFD. Uh, fuel on board, standard 50%, because we've just loaded in with the standard payload. And we've got no low fuel enunciated here on the PFD. Okay, and we can turn our <coughs> avionics master off. Uh, it now want to test flaps, make sure that they're performing working properly. So put them full down. Take a view uh, out the window there. Yep, you can see that they're extended. Okay, trims set to take off now. This is actually a good procedure to go through because it will stop you forgetting. Uh, so we'll set uh, elevator trim to there and then we have the rudder trim to here. And we'll just put in some left rudder trim. There we are. Uh, pedo heat. Uh, two pedo heats left and right. Pop them on. And then you would check for heat. Uh, now it's a stall warning test next, and the stall warning is uh, over here. We'll just press that. And we'll stall, stall, stall. That's okay. And master switch off. Okay, and that completes the pre-flight uh, pre inspection of the cabin. Okay, here we are with the before starting engine checklist. Uh, first item on it is to check weight and balance. So we will uh, pull up our payload screen. And as you can see, it's just a standard default payload um, that we've got loaded in. But as we talked about in the second video, this is where you could configure your payload and get your uh, max takeoff weight and your, but we'll make a note of that. So 5,345 pounds and the center of gravity of 27.1. Okay, so that's our weight and balance is checked. Uh, no passengers on board today. Doors are closed and locked. Uh, if you want, you can go and make sure that the back door is latched. And if you do uh, leave a door open, it may cause the aircraft to crash uh, on takeoff. So it's something you definitely want to make sure. And we'll pop the master switch back on. Master avionics. And we'll put on the auxiliary bus as well. So our parking brake is still set, engine inlet, now it's worth a bit of a discussion here about the engine inlet. This is the inertial separator um, and it's a, a dual actuated system in this model, um, which means there are two switches, there's the primary and then there's an override which is sort of like a backup in case the primary uh, actuator fails. Um, two positions, you can either have it open or uh, in bypass mode and what this does is it um, deploys a metal plate into the engine ram inlet air ram air inlet and what that does is it uh, by deflecting the air it means any heavy objects particles uh, dirt ice will be deflected uh, and will not be ingested into the engine and it's a way of protecting the engine from foreign object damage uh, you don't always need to use it on takeoff. If you're taking off from a well-paved, clean strip, and you're not expecting a risk of any bird strikes or anything like that. Or you need uh, more power for any reason, because uh, it does, uh, by putting it into bypass mode, it will take about 150 pounds of available torque. Um, but it would be fairly normal to place it in bypass. It takes 40 seconds to fully deploy, and we can see engine inlet normal is displayed but as soon as that uh, plate is uh, fully deployed that will change to engine inlet BP for bypass. We'll just bring up the MFD, bring the PFD out of revisionary mode. Okay and there we can see it's changed to engine inlet bypass so that is the inertial separator in bypass. Right, uh, fuel selectors just confirm left and right still on, our firewall fuel shut off is still pushed. Emergency power lever is normal. Um, now in the real aircraft or the real G1000 if uh, you bring it out of normal 
you'd get an indicator on the um, enunciator on the uh, G1000, but uh, that's not modelled yet. Um, okay, but that wants to be all the way back in normal, and it's just worth saying that these settings are really important. Um, so uh, it's really got to make sure that all these levers are in the correct position for engine start. So our power, our throttle lever. Let's bring the checklist back up. So fuel select is left and right on. Firewall fuel shut off is pushed in. Emergency power lever is normal. Power lever idle. So it's all the way back, but not into beta range. And you should never bring it into beta range. Uh, uh, you should never bring it into beta range if the engine isn't on or you are in the air. Prop uh, all the way back in favour position and the fuel condition lever here is all the way back in cutoff. Uh, flaps are now set to zero. So bring them back up. And circuit breakers are still all pushed. Our cabin heat is off and that's to reduce electrical load on the system. Uh, and we our takeoff torque limit. We've got a little mod here available from Flight Sim to you if you're on the PC, which just as a little cheat sheet. Uh, you can also look at the manual, and I'll cover this uh, in a separate video in more detail. But just quickly, we've got an outside air temperature of five degrees, and this uh, Orkers Island is at effectively sea level. So, well, ten it starts at ten. So. C level, so a takeoff torque limit 1740 pounds. Okay, uh, we'll perform our uh, autopilot, or an abbreviated autopilot uh, pre flight check. Uh, the full check would involve testing all the functions, but basically, uh, what I'd like to do is to turn it on, make sure we've got green AP indicated, and we've got functions, and then I might arm heading function, yep that's working, and VS, and just make sure I can adjust, I'll dial in 800 feet per minute, and we've got a flight director has come up as well, so that's our autopilot, and then turn it off, and there we have the uh, oral tone as well, and that completes the before starting engine checklist. So thank you for watching the video, uh, if you liked it please hit uh, like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't checked out the other videos in the tutorial series, uh, please do so. Uh, next part we will be getting straight into engine start, so until then, see you next time.